What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and I am back. It has been a while since I have played in a draft format league. It's been a while since I put out a video for you guys. Forgive me if I'm a little bit rusty. I'm gonna do my best here, but this is going to be my uh, draft recap video for my first draft in the APA, a new league that I have joined. MV invited me to it, and it's got a lot of great people in it. I'm really excited to try out this format. And because the GBA is going to be a Let's Go Pikachu Eevee League, I, I really wanted the other league that I was going to be a part of uh, to be still the USUM League so that I can play around with the, the full roster of things. So just a quick recap on what the APA format's going to be. It's going to be three drafts. You draft once and then play for four weeks and then draft again, play for four weeks, draft again, play for four weeks, and then in the if you, if you make it to the playoffs, you get to make an all-star squad, still has to be legal in the tier format, uh, from any of the mons you've drafted before. So I really wanted to do something fun here, uh, because Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon is getting a little tired for me as a meta, so I wanted to do something a little bit different. Uh, so we're going to get into the draft that I did for my first draft for the APA Season 5, and kind of talk a little bit about my thought process as I'm going through. So uh, the first, I was one of the later picks. I believe I was like third to last or something like that. So I had a pseudo wheel kind of, but um, really unfortunate positioning. That's where I was last season in the GBA. And I really don't like that position because you are not afforded the benefit of a true wheel pick. And I think there's a lot of benefit to having, to going really early in the first round if, if you really want some power. But I did get very lucky, and my first pick ended up being Victini. I love Victini. Really like fire types, offensive fire types. Victini is amazing, V-Create is amazing. I was so happy that it, that it fell to me. At this point, when it, when it came around to my pick, I hadn't even decided where I wanted to go yet, but I knew I wanted a theme, and I think you guys are going to notice it uh, pretty quickly, maybe by, uh, maybe a couple picks in, just because I really wanted to do something fun. So I went Victini first pick. I don't really need to say much about this. Victini being a base 100 can be very versatile. His move pool is great. Uh, Waters struggle to kind of combat the fact that it has the powerful bolt strike and v-create is just so hard to switch into it's got a decent move pool overall and i just i love victini i love what it does especially on the offensive end and the fact that it can go special and uh, non-special my second pick uh, was hoopa unbound uh, i have been very interested in hoopa unbound just because it's like, especially defensively, it gets a lot of possible switch-ins against some mons. Now, the four times weakness to bug is very unfortunate, uh, but Victini is neutral to that. And uh, they don't share a ghost weakness because Hoopa resists it with its dark typing. That cohesion makes them both amazing wall breakers, both of which can go special or physical. Uh, and so... That brings me to my third pick, uh, which was Mega Medicham. <laughs> and now I'm sure this is around about the time that some people caught on in the in the draft, but I don't think if people were looking at me enough uh, to really see what I was doing yet. Uh, so I'll just tell you guys, I had decided to go back to my roots uh, and I'm going Mono Psychic as my draft. And I was so <laughs> pumped that I got Victini, Hoopa, and Medicham because oh my god they all just hit so hard victini v create there's there's not a lot of switch ins for it hoopa like immensely powerful not a lot of switch ins to it mega metagem immensely powerful not a lot of switch ins to it and all of them have pretty decent coverage options for each other metagem obviously has the elemental punches hoopa has some elemental punches too and their typings are all sort of like different to each other just barely like we have uh, like a bug resist to take away the fact that psychic has a bug weakness we have a ghost resist to take away the fact that we have a ghost weakness with psychic and so the typing all kind of mixes in there there are very powerful wall breakers uh, and so I just, I was like, let's just keep, let's go in on this, right? So around about this time, like 
when I was drafting, Victini was left open, so I picked it. Hoopa normally doesn't go super early round, but it was very important that I did grab it because I really needed that typing. Uh, Mega Medicham I picked then um, because Mega Gardevoir and Mega Gallade had already gone, and I was I needed a Mega. The way the tiering works uh, in this is very similar to how GBA has done it in the past. You get one tier one one tier two, two tier threes, one tier four, one tier five, and one mega, and then four free picks that you get to use points on. Tier one is 180, tier two is 120, tier three is 100, tier four, ooh, yeah, 60, and tier five is 40. So by grabbing Hoopa, which is all Hoopa Unbound, which was also tier one, which I think is kind of a weird place for it, to be perfectly honest, but I needed it as part of my team. So, Victini being tier 1, Hoopa being tier 1, and I've now spent 180 of my points. So, I was looking at the Megas, and obviously there's four Psychics that were really worth... Five Psychics in the tier, but uh, four that I was really looking at. Uh, Metacham, Mega Gallade, Mega Alakazam, and uh, Mega Slowbro. Now... Alakazam had gone, I think, at that point. Gallade went, and Gardevoir went. So, even though Mega Gardevoir wasn't one of the ones I was really looking at, at this point, I'm like, oof. Like, uh, there's a lot, a lot going on there. Uh, and so I was kind of forced to pick up Mega Cham then. Uh, I was hoping to get it a couple of rounds later. Because uh, I like kind of saving my Mega Pick, because Megas are pretty strong, so they can be relatively versatile in general. Uh, so that was when I ended up picking up Mega Cham. I was very happy with the wall breaking potential that I had three rounds in. Looking at it next, I, I was still, I felt it was very important to start looking into the typings that I needed. Uh, and so when I was looking, when I was considering what my next round picks was going to be, uh, and knowing that I needed a tier two, two tier threes, a tier four, tier five, still. Uh, I was kind of contemplating, and I decided to go with Metagross, and the reason for that was looking at Tier 3, I kind of knew what else I would want from Tier 3, and looking at the points I had remaining, uh, I wasn't sure that I was going to be using 3 points in Tier 3, that being because I had already spent 180 on my first free pick, I have 3 free picks left, so looking that point-wise, 220, if I were to pick up a tier 3, that leaves me at the 120 left, that's forcing me into um, double tier 4. That was my thought process there when I was kind of looking at how to frame my, my next pick. Uh, I wanted to get a, a tier 3 Psychic pretty early, and I really wanted Steel Psychic, and that kind of limited me to either Metagross or Bronzong. Now, I've used Bronzong in the past, I really like Bronzong, uh, but Metagross played into really well another strategy that I started forming in my mind around about this point, but I hadn't put the pieces together yet to get because it was still too early. And I'll, ta I'll come back to it later and sort of talk about it. But Metagross is great, also has great coverage in, uh, in the elemental punches, earthquake, steel typing is important. Uh, just in general, steel typing is really good, both defensively and offensively. Metagross gives me a stealth rocker, which is great. Uh, and just uh, more power, more power, so <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Uh, my round five pick, this is, you know, when I, I double at the bottom and then I have to wait and wait for the draft to come back and I double at the bottom. So this one was a really long wait and I ended up taking as my round five pick Mesprit. A big reason for that was, uh, I think one or two of them Lake Spirits had already gone. I wanted a Levitator uh, because I don't want to be susceptible to just uh, Earthquake spam against my team, especially given that both Victini and Metagross were weak to it. Uh, and Victini being, you know, a tier one pick, tier one picks. I'm not saying tier one picks always show up, but they, you know, you tend to use the better Pokemon you have. And so I don't want to, I don't want my team to be just entirely susceptible to Earthquake and just lose to ground types. You know, like as a psychic, mono you kind of expect that you're going to struggle and have to find ways around dark types bugs and shadow or shadow and ghosts you, you expect that right so i've been drafting to kind of do that so much but in doing so i had inadvertently made myself a little weak to ground so i really needed that mesprit also has great coverage again with bolt beam combinations 
uh, and uh, flamethrower, and also gives me another stealth rocker, gives me U-turn momentum, uh, which is another thing that Victini can provide me. Uh, mono Psychic is whatever. But Mesprit's just, Mesprit's great, uh, great, and I've actually used Mesprit before in Season 4, and it was a great staple to my squad. Um, I ended up running Scarfed on it a lot. This is back when I was still really new. Uh, I said Season 4. Season 4 of the GBA, which was my first season doing draft. Uh, and I, I really liked Mesprit. I thought the coverage it could it provided my team was very useful. And I used it as part of like a pseudo rain draft that I didn't I didn't love that team, but that was back when I just I didn't have a lot of help. I was building a lot by myself. Didn't have a front office at the time. Had this weird view that I thought front offices were cheating, which I no longer believe is to be the case because there's a significant time investment that goes into draft leagues. So. I think people helping you out is just a good use of time. Uh, I guess I should go over nicknames while I'm doing this, because uh, there's going to be a lot of them this season. Uh, so, uh, Victini is going to be nicknamed Apple Teeny. Hoopa is going to be nicknamed Hula. Metacham is nicknamed Psy Kick. <laughs> uh, Metagross is uh, Z Drive, which I am borrowing from A Drive's nickname of his Mega Metagross when he played in the UCL. Mesprit is, uh, because I've drafted it before, I just used the old nickname, which is Two Chains, because uh, shiny Mesprit is like a very gold colored and his two tails kind of look like a Jewish chain hang low sort of thing. Uh, so next pick, uh, this was sort of a wheel pick. Um, I picked Mesprit first because the next two people were not likely to take my round six pick, but I didn't want to let it go back to the super long wheel. Uh, so I prioritized Mesprit, which is something that someone below me might have wanted because at that time they were missing stealth rockers and one of them didn't have a ground resist yet. So I just, just to get it early, that's why I got Mesprit first. Mesprit is tier four, which I think is a great uh, value pick, especially for what it provided my team. So I wanted to grab that quickly. Uh, and then move on to Guard of War, which I believe is a tier 3. Let me just verify that. Yeah, Guard of War was in... Oh, I just said it out loud. But yeah, Guard of War is my next pick. And Guard of War is amazing for my team. Fairy typing pairs insanely well defensively with Psychic typing. Because it provides uh, resistance to both bug and dark so that's super useful for me and for what i needed it for metagross being something that can provide me a resist to ghost so i'm sort of building i say resist at this point the best you can hope for is neutral i just need something that's neutral against those things uh, at best so that i can sort of use it as a team building so gardevoir provides that Gardevoir can also kind of be a little bit of a wall breaker if I want it to be. It's not super fast. One thing you'll sort of notice about the draft this deep in is I do not have amazing speed on it. I have multiple base 100s. I have a base 80. I have a base 70. Um, looking, Just looking at the speed tiers like that, it's not amazing for me, but I'm drafting Mono Psychic. What do you want me to do? So I, I grabbed Gardevoir and then I had a long wait uh, through the entire roster uh, and the next pick I ended up going with uh, was Meloetta and the reason I did Meloetta is because it's a ghost immunity almost exclusively for that reason because t uh, like stat wise it's weirdly uh, it's it's quite similar to Gardevoir in that they're both uh, pretty high special attack both pretty high special defense both lackluster in the speed department uh, and then obviously they have low attack and defense. Meloetta is basically, if you really look at it, it's just the stats of Gardevoir just a little bit better and uh, different resists. So if I wanted um, a specially defensive, specially offensive, not great speed tier breaker uh, that can go a little bit more on the defensive side, can build, play the sub calm mind game, uh, Gardevoir or Meloetta based on the typing that I really want to bring to the team. Meloetta also can obviously go Relic Song and now all of a sudden I'm I'm dropping that Psychic to, to be a fighting type Pokemon, so it's it's interesting. Uh, Meloetta provides that, and I, I like the typing on it. I think Meloetta is really good. Uh, and I think as far as a value pick, Meloetta is absolutely insane to be in Tier 4. Absolutely insane. I just think it's so good that it's there. 
because again, like it's basically just if you look at the stats, it is it is Gardevoir. It's higher than Gardevoir's stat in literally every single category, every single one. So I I think it's ludicrous that it's in tier four, but uh, a great value pick. So. I had to grab it, had to. And then on the pseudo wheel next, uh, before I had to wait a long time, I had to grab Ditto. Now, people are going to be like, oh, it's not monotype, it's not a monotype draft. And I'm going to tell those people, calm down, please, just <laughs> just calm down a little bit. I had to draft Ditto, guys. He's a 100% he's drafted Mon for me. And I need to have him on my roster for, uh, if I make playoffs, I need uh, an all-star option. And Ditto, like I can't, I can't not have Ditto, guys. It's me. It's Geo. You guys know me, so I had to draft him there. I had a long wait until my next pick, um, and it was right about this point that I really had to start assessing what tiers I had got and what was going to go next. This is often a draft style of me, which is why a lot of people sometimes, like I've been told by a lot of people that I snipe them, a lot of people, and I think that's because. Um, prioritizing value picks is something that multiple people do uh, and a lot of my the way I pick is by analyzing the picks that will come after me and sort of figuring out like is this something that team is missing so I can look at other people like with when, when I'm drafting mono psychic a pretty easy thing is how many psychics do they have if they already have one a lot of the psychic pokemon are not probably going to be on their priority list unless it's something that fits in a tier they're missing and provides the other typing that they want and then they'll just deal with the with the psychic typing so like gardevoir for example is not a bad pickup for a lot of people even if they already have a psychic just because you might be drafting it for the fairy typing that so you got you get the idea that's sort of where i was going with that so Looking at what I had spent, I have Meloetta and Ditto are both tier 4s, so I've now spent 60 of my free points on um, on a tier 4. Mesprit also a tier 4, so actually I've spent 120 on tier 4, which is something I'd said before wasn't something I really wanted to do, uh, but then when I... I was projecting my rank, my round 9, 10, and 11 picks, that was when I decided like I have to get Ditto, right? Um, talking with MB about it we're kind of discussing my draft and he's like you gotta get ditto it's you and I'm like yeah you're right it's me so I had to grab ditto uh, which ended up uh, meaning that I'd spent 120 on those two remaining picks now I don't have a tier two yet you'll still see that I don't have a tier two uh, Metagross is a tier three Gardevoir is also a tier three so I'm full on tier threes so I don't have a tier two and I don't have a tier five and then my remaining points do end up granting me a tier three. So looking at that, I had a couple of ways I could go with this, uh, with my free point expenditures at this point. Um, it's it's locked me into a tier three at this point, um, being the highest. I could also go tier four, but there's not really a reason for me to do that. And prior to Ditto, one option I had was to grab a tier five, and then my free points could have been spent on a tier two. Now, Tier 2 has a lot of good Psychics. Just to run through kind of that list a little bit with you guys, uh, Tier 2 would have had access to Slowbro, wasn't drafted yet. Celebi wasn't drafted yet. Um, Celes no, not Celestia. Uh, Cresselia wasn't drafted yet. Uh, so it really... There was a lot, and Slowbro wasn't drafted yet, so there was very much some options there. So I actually didn't feel the need to go a tier 2 yet because there were going to be options for it later. And so I thought tier 3 was starting to get heavily picked around about this time, and I wanted to start introducing new secondary typings to my to my repertoire so that I, I don't end up losing to just random other types. Uh, kind of how I mentioned earlier, one of the things I was looking at with Mesprit was to give me some ground help. I really wanted to start looking into other options, so I ended up going Slow King. Uh, Slow King being obviously a way for me to kind of deal with waters a little bit. Not that my team is like water weak, but waters are omnipresent, and I really wanted an option to do that. Slow King I think is really great. Uh, looking into tier 2 knowing that slow bro was there and slow king is relatively similar just like specially defensive and sp instead of physically defensive uh, I knew that it would be a good pickup for me um, provides me with now a key piece 
that I had been discussing earlier as a potential strategy that I said I was going to come back to, and that's Trick Room as an availability for me. Victini uh, obviously lowers its own speed with V-Create, so it can function pretty well in Trick Room. Hoopa U as an offensive mon doesn't have amazing speed, and so it can function well in Trick Room. Uh, Metacham, it's base 100, I guess you could run it just zero speed and it can, it can still work. Uh, Metagross, uh, in that speed category, that would be good as well. Mesprit speed, base speed 80, you can just run negative. Gardevoir is, uh, is that 70? No, it's also 80. Um, Meloetta is 90, which, you know, not amazing for it. Ditto, you can just run like a lag and claw or something like that. Uh, Macho Brace just lower its speed a little bit. Slow King, obviously, super slow itself. So I have the makings and the ability to run uh, a little bit of a Trick Room team if I wanted to. Now that's something I could have picked up on a slow bro in tier 2. I could have picked a Cresselia in tier 2, which would have given me even more ground resist. But I didn't, I wanted the additional typing and a little bit better move pool coverage there. And Cresselia is good, um, but I... Lackluster offensively, I think, and more just... I, I've used Cresselia before, and she's really hard to kill. But she encourages bringing a lot of the typing for some offensive mon that I'm a little bit worried about. And I, I, ultimately, I just felt like she would find her way into the team a lot, but she would encourage things I didn't really want to encourage against my team. And so I felt Slow King was a good tier 3 option, uh, saves my tier 2 pick which uh, I made on the on the wheel back up because I did not care about my tier 5. There are so many psychics there, none of them are particularly good, so I knew I was just going to be able to make one of those picks just kind of randomly, so I figured now's the time to get the tier 2, just in case something else someone wants. A lot of the psychics available, obviously. Knew I wasn't going to pick slow bro. Uh, feeling like the Slow King pick uh, sort of negated the need for me to pick Cresselia. So looking at the remaining Mon, and I decided on Celebi. Uh, it gives me a little bit of a uh, Firewater Grass Core with Victini, Slow King, Celebi, which I think is cool. Celebi um, gives me a lot, like Baton Pass options. Uh, it gives me a Stealth Rock option. It can run defensive pretty well. It's, um, it just It provides a lot for me. It's another ground resist, whatever, I, you know, I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, a little bit more help with the water types that are just so um, readily available and on so many teams. More U-turn, U-turn's always good, I really like it. Um, between Celebi, Mesprit, and Victini, I got some decent U-turn options for momentum. Uh, good help for me against uh, electric type Pokemon, uh, which otherwise I don't have a ton of resists for so and it's just all around really solid does give me another four times weakness to bug uh, honestly resistance uh, not resistance uh, weakness to bug just can't really be helped it's just helped it's just a matter of making sure that i have an answer to the specific bug types that people are going to be bringing and if people want to slot it as a coverage move that's just something that happens when you run monotyping i'm prepared for that i've i've played monotyping before guys that was my channel before i was really into draft like all i would do is just bring monotype teams against pretty good players like i used to play against um uh he now goes by mr talent but used to be nips uh, i had a, a really good battle against him uh, I've done it against uh, Hank the Pidgey, which people might remember. Yeah, he was a really good battler. Um, and like, you know, you do you do pretty well sometimes. It's just a matter of putting together a team where you have answers to people. Like, the idea of why a monotype is weak is because you can just spam one move, right? Like, we, we have that mentality, but it's not really true, and I think Celebi is the answer that I need to people thinking that they can spam in neutral. So I, I really I really love the Celebi pick, another option for rocks, and I just think it's a great pick. And then my last pick, tier 5, uh, sort of a throwaway, I went, I decided to go with uh, Zaytu just to discourage teams from thinking a good strategy against me is just 100% to um, hazard stack or something like that because they, you know, there's the threat of Zatu there. Zatu is weird. Um, the, her stats are just kind of garbage, but she has U-turn as an option, which is kind of good. Um, Magic Bounce, I just think, is fun. 
really this uh, you you more run Zatu kind of as a support mon just in general defensive sets tend to be better than her offensive sets because her offenses are just bad 95 speed 95 special attack just not good uh, her defenses are not good either, not saying that, but uh, providing more switch-ins to take advantage of magic bounce more often uh, and to be able to U-turn, giving you more ability to roost if you need to. And then honestly, with Zatu, a lot of the time you just run Nightshade and Toxic anyway, just for set amounts of damage. And like the ability being a pseudo taunt, but like a little bit better is sort of useful in that regard. Uh, just to threaten people from... Tox King, Threatened Will-O-Wisps, stuff like that. It's a it's a tier 5 pick, so I don't expect it to be the thing I bring every time. I expect it to be something that can potentially bring value and make people have to think about that as, a, as one option when they're team building. I think that's the biggest value you can get from a tier 5, simply because most of the time the stats don't build themselves well unless it fits a niche. So, you know, sometimes you can get pretty good value out of an offensive Pokemon because there are, a lot of the time, some Pokemon fall to lower usage just because there's a better option. You know, a faster fire type, a stronger fire type, or something like that. But I mean, if you think about Pokemon, like, what's a good example of a tier five? Okay, so like your Rotom Frost, right? It's got the same stats as the other Rotoms. It's not a bad electric type. The problem is that there are so many other Rotoms that are just better combo typings than frost ice being not a great typing in general but it still has some good options to it so that doesn't make it bad electivire and uh cryogonal are both in tier five that's interesting uh those are like relatively decent options as well electivire um it's just outclassed by so many other electric types so of course it's going to be low tier but that doesn't mean it's a very poor uh, off on offensive type so in that regard that's a value of tier 5 rapidash is another one like it's just outclassed by so many fire types that doesn't mean as a fire type that you don't need to respect it you you need to respect it's off it offensively just as much as you would another fire type that had similar stats to it so that's one of the possible things you can do with that like hey i don't have a fire type at all and i want an offensive fire type it would fit well in my squad hey rapidash something like there's one option one way to look at the draft uh, for me i didn't need offense I needed utility. I needed someone to, when they're team building against me, respect it. I don't want people to look at my tier five and go, literally not scared of this at all. That's, I think, the value there. So people just need to be like, well, I could hazard stack, Zatu could come. Like they have to think twice. You know, that's sort of my my idea behind that. The highest value I could have gotten out of a, a tier five, I believe. Other options I was looking at and considering is like there's Masharna, which if I wanted to go kind of a defensive route, uh, Masharna of course also learns Trick Room I believe, so that would have been an option, but so does Zatu, so I still have that option if I want to lean heavily on that as a strategy. I don't know whether or not I do, uh, we'll have to see in the team builds looking up next. So that was my first draft for the APA. <laughs> I think the team's pretty powerful, honestly. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. There's surprising depth to it, thanks to how many psychic types there are. So I thought that was... I think I'm just going to have a lot of fun with it. I'm really interested to look into the team building dynamic that I can do with a team like this. Excited to play it. My first week matchup, you guys can see that video come up next week. Going to be up against Just Kurt, and his team is the uh, Winnipeg peg blue blastoises i believe yes winnipeg blue Bast blastoises so look forward to that video coming your way next week of course i'll have as always i do uh, a locker room up with that too so let me know were there any other psychics you think uh, might have fit well and uh, what do you think about the order that i drafted them in what are you guys thinking about me bringing back the old school geo with the with the monotyping love to hear your comments in the comment section down below as always my name is jim leader geo you guys are the challengers thanks for stopping by i'll see you guys next time